Is Tesla going backwards again? You know, Tesla's electric vehicles are considered market leading and trend setting, but many of the company's decisions when it comes to their solar business has left us scratching our heads. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing or answering the question of why is Tesla going backwards and how their latest generation solar system actually represents a devolution of solar inverter technology. Now, for those of you who have been following the channel for a while, you know that Tesla has had sort of a love-hate relationship with uh, its solar installers in the past. You know, one of the reasons is because Tesla is one of the few companies that directly competes with its installation partners, meaning that there are several companies across the country that are signed up to be Tesla authorized Powerwall resellers or installers, uh, where consumers can also just go directly to Tesla's website and in many cases get a competing quote to have Tesla install the batteries for them directly. And of course, oftentimes the price quotes that Tesla is quoting directly are lower than what one of their third party installation partners can quote, in which case you, it kind of puts the installer in a position where, where they are competing against Tesla directly for that business. But some of the other criticism that Tesla Energy has received has revolved around poor customer service or how it's very difficult to get, get a hold of somebody on the phone to receive a, a project update. Uh, or if they need service after the install to, to get technical support or get service back out to the property. There have been a number of reports of Tesla's poor response time in the area of customer service and communication. Tesla also has moved recently from what I would consider a more open architecture system with its second generation Powerwall 2, which could integrate with other inverter systems like Solar Edge or Enphase, for example, to now a completely closed system where if you're gonna have a Tesla solar system, you're going to have Tesla solar, Tesla's inverter, Tesla's battery, everything running on Tesla's software platform. And I think for a long time, there's also been this, this trade-off between having the cheapest price solar, which Elon Musk has publicly stated many times that he wants to have the cheapest price solar, the most affordable solar, and using the most advanced technology. And when I look at the, the most recent evolution of Tesla's solar system centered around the Tesla Powerwall 3 battery, I'm kind of scratching my head as to why we took a step back in terms of best of breed technology. Now, every solar power system that hooks up to our home's electric system or hooks up to the electric grid has to have an inverter somewhere in the system. And the inverter's job is to convert the direct current, the DC electricity that natively comes off of solar panels and off of batteries into alternating current, which is what our homes are wired for and what the electric grid is wired for. So in order for usable electricity to come off of a solar power system, you have to have an inverter as part of that system. Now, back in the day, we used to use what were what are called string inverters. And the reason they're called string inverters is because we, we would typically series connect multiple solar panels together in, in what we call a string. So let's say you had eight, 10 or 12 solar panels series connected together. We refer to that as a string. And then you would deliver that string or that circuit to a central inverter, which would convert the direct current coming off the string into alternating current to feed the home. Now, the advantage of the string inverter was it was a pretty simple wiring uh, and it was a pretty simple conversion process. But the downside with the string inverter architecture is that the string is only as strong as its weakest link. And so if you had damage to one of the solar panels in the string, or maybe you had shading, shading or shadow cast on one of the solar panels in the string, it would knock the performance of the entire string down. Now, there were also some safety concerns about high voltage DC electricity flowing on the rooftop, even if utility power had been cut to the house. Now, the second generation of inverters introduced what we called module level power electronics. And module level power electronics are devices that are installed on the per solar panel level that help maximize the safety and the performance of each solar panel. Now, the first generation of module level power electronics are microinverters. Now, when we're talking about a microinverter, what we mean is instead of having one central string inverter that handles conversion for the entire system, we literally have a small inverter or a microinverter installed underneath each solar panel. Now this provides a few benefits. First, it provides for shade mitigation. 
So if shading were to negatively affect the power output of one of the solar panels, only the output of that single microinverter would be affected. All of the other microinverters would still be able to operate at maximum power. The other advantage is that it provided what's called a rapid shutdown capability, which means that if firefighters had to cut utility power to the house, power would be de-energized all the way up to the rooftop to the microinverters. Uh, and of course, the third benefit was now you could track each unit individually. So you can build a mapping on your phone and, and you can track on the app and actually see performance down to the per solar panel level. But it introduced more complexity to the system and made for a more complex wiring on the roof because now you have to have a special piece of equipment on each solar panel, and then they all have to be connected to a trunking cable to deliver that power down to ground level. Now, the other issue with the microinverters is that recently, the solar panel power output has started to outpace the microinverter AC power output, meaning that you have a larger discrepancy between the DC potential power of the solar panel or the DC input power of the solar panel and how much usable AC power the microinverter can output, meaning that you're having what's called micro clipping or clipping at the module level where the power potential of the solar panel cannot be fully realized because the inverter that's connected to it is not able to handle all of that input. But it was a step forward compared to the string inverter. Now, the next generation was the DC optimized solution when SolarEdge came on the scene back in 2014. And the nice thing about the DC optimized solution is that it provided all of the performance benefits and the safety benefits of the microinverter. In fact, even improving on conversion efficiency overall. Uh, and it provided the ease of wiring and lower cost of the old string inverters. So you can install a DC optimizer on each solar panel, allowing you to track each solar panel and allowing each solar panel to operate at its maximum power potential, but with the simplicity of wiring of the string inverters, because the optimizers could be strung together and then one or two circuits brought from the rooftop down to ground level to the DC optimized inverter. And so for the past 10 years on the residential side of solar, module level power optimization, whether microinverters or the newer DC optimized system has been the standard. So we are wondering many of us, why did Tesla go back to the old architecture unless it just comes back to the simple idea of having the cheapest cost solar. And so again, I think it's, we've seen when Tesla's had to choose between having the cheaper cost solar versus having the most advanced technology, they are favoring just going with whatever the cheapest cost option is. Now, there's several potential risks and deficiencies with that integrated string inverter battery-based architecture. The first is that now you have a single central point of failure for all of your solar and all of your storage which means if a Powerwall 3 unit goes bad, you could potentially lose all of your solar production, thereby losing any net metering benefit or any benefit to offset your electric bill, and you could be, be losing your battery backup as well, since the, the inverter and the battery storage are integrated into a single appliance there. So I think this is probably the worst we've seen in terms of having a single central point of failure that can take out your solar production and your emergency backup power with a single equipment failure. But the other issue is Tesla has not incorporated other components on their home solar system that a number of the other leading manufacturers have. Uh, for example, intelligent load control. Now, top inverter manufacturers like SolarEdge have already incorporated device level intelligent load control. Or if you wanna control every circuit in the house, you can install something like a span smart panel. Now, one of the things I've mentioned in the past is that I actually think Tesla should have acquired span smart panel so that they could have had in some sort of intelligent monitoring and intelligent load control as part of their solar platform. Now, when you're running on a solar and battery backup system, particularly if you're running in an emergency power mode, in a, in a, a grid down mode, oftentimes you don't wanna run everything in the house simultaneously. If you're trying to conserve battery power to, to last through an extended outage, there are certain high draw but low priority items in your house that you can probably do without. Think things like electric ovens, 
electric water heaters, uh, maybe your electric clothes dryer. Now these are all nice to have items, but they're not necessarily things that you want running and drawing off your battery if you're in an emergency backup power mode. And so intelligent load management systems would allow you to prioritize or in some cases program for those devices to be automatically powered off so you can stretch your battery runtime for those most critical items in the house. The other missing piece here is the generator support. And so this is especially important for those of you who are fully off grid or you're preparing to survive um, a prolonged grid down event. I always recommend having a generator hookup option in addition to your solar batteries. That way, if you hit a patch of inclement weather where the, the batteries are draining down, maybe the, the solar panels are not able to recharge fast enough because there's just not enough sunlight hitting the solar panels. Well, it's great to have an option to fire up a fuel burning generator. Just let the generator run for a few hours so you can bring your batteries back full and then you can go back to running off of solar and battery power. So it gives you an extra level of redundancy and it really allows you to stretch your battery runtime and also stretch your generator fuel supply uh, during a blackout. And then the other issue is that it, it, it's now a, a completely closed system. Whereas with the previous generation with the Tesla Powerwall 2 battery, you could pair that with any of the other leading brands of solar panels or solar inverters. Uh, now with the new Tesla Powerwall 3 based solar system, it's pretty much a complete proprietary closed system end to end. You're going to be using Tesla solar, Tesla inverter, Tesla battery, and the Tesla monitoring software. So this has been a discussion on why is Tesla going backwards or is, is Tesla going backwards again? Um, as always, folks, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and also go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Uh, of course, if you're a homeowner out there, if you're in the process of looking at different solar power options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote for any of these options or, or really any of the leading solar options out there, uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below. You can set up a call with a solar expert uh, or just use our free online quote tool so you can see how much solar and storage costs in your area. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time with Solar Surge. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.